I'm Hugh from SRI and this video is going to show you how to put the AS120 liquid auto sampler on top of the 8610 CV which is our vertically oriented GC. The injection is vertical. So the auto sampler um, is kind of like a robot. I'm just going to move the um, auto sampler to the injector position and then you can see what it does. It sticks the syringe into the um, injection port of the GC. But this is also a convenient way to put a new syringe in or take an old syringe out. So I'm going to take this syringe out. I'm going to turn this little grip thing and then loosen this nut and then I'm going to be able to pull the syringe out and because the syringe needle is in the injection port it's easy for me to get it in or out when I do it like this. So this will be important because otherwise you would have to remove this cover in order to get the syringe when the when when everything's retracted you can see it the syringe retracts up into this housing and then goes over to here so this is just a convenient way of getting the syringe in and out so you've seen it kind of work we'll, we'll go into how it works in more detail but I'm gonna take this apart and then put it back together so you can see how to install it or remove it so on the back there's a few electrical connections there's, there's a power which comes from one of these desktop power supplies so we can unplug the power and then there's this connector which goes to the gas chromatograph it goes to this plug on the side of the gas chromatograph this is how the auto sampler and the GC talk and then there's this which is the USB cable now it's a micro USB on this side but on the side that connects to the computer, it's a regular USB cable. Right? So now there's no, no, no electrical connections, and there's these four brass thumb screws that hold the auto sampler on. Right? So they're, they look like that, and there's four of them. There's the last one right there. So we've got our four thumb screws. And then I should be able to just lift the auto sampler up and we'll put it on this, this little bench temporarily. Notice that there's two little kind of prongs at the bottom of this um, aluminum plate and those line the auto sampler up. This over like that. So there's two corresponding holes in this plate here on the top. So when we ship the GC, these little standoffs are not connected because they, they would make the shipping a little more prone to damage if there's something poking up. So these four little standoffs and brown washers are disconnected when the GC is first delivered. So you'll have to connect these and you use a wrench and just, they don't have to be super tight, but you shouldn't be able to move them with your finger. So, this is the injector of the GC. If you're not familiar with the GC, this is the oven of the GC, and this is the column that's connected, and this is the injection port. In this case, it's a heated injection port, and the column is a 0.53 millimeter capillary column, and it's going to a flame ionization detector. So, we don't really have to talk too much about the GC, just that the GC when it's in this format, which is the vertically oriented oven format, there's always the interface provided so that an, an auto sampler like this can be connected after the fact. doesn't have to come back to the factory. The auto sampler can just be added at any time. Okay, so I'm going to take the auto sampler now and put it back on the GC. So here we go. And I, there's two little prongs have to line up and go in the two existing little holes and that kind of aligns everything together so then you put the, the set screws back one more back here 
so then the the cable that goes between the GC and the auto sampler will plug back in there. And then the power, I think it's 24 volts. And I, I hear something happening and something moving when I plugged in the power. Basically the auto sampler is going to its home position, which is where it goes to start every sequence. And then finally I'm going to plug the USB cable back in. And I heard a little ding-dong on the computer, so that means it recognized it. Okay, so far so good. So, let me turn this GC around. And then I'll, I'll start, turn on the power to the GC. So now the GC is under power and so is the auto sampler. So, there's a, a software package that comes on a little thumb drive that you'll get with the auto sampler that contains the program to operate the auto sampler. So you can also download that from our website. We have a copy of it on our website or you can use the little thumb drive. Thumb drive may be more current. It may contain the very latest version. Softwares tend to be updated on some kind of a basis. But the software looks kind of like this. I'm going to close this. Well, I won't close it. We'll, we'll close it later. We'll just get started and um, show you how it operates. So this is what the screen of the software program looks like. There's a configuration button here, which is where we are right now, and then there's a method button. The method is what tells the auto sampler how many samples to take, what speed, everything. There's a million parameters that you can enter to tailor the behavior of the auto sampler the way you want. But the configuration button is what you need to go to first, and that allows you to make sure that the auto sampler knows where the various um, ports and bottles are going to be. So I'm going to just get the software talking to the GC also. So we really are going to have to have a computer that has two windows. One for the Peach Simple software, which is our software that runs the GC, and then another window for the auto sampler software. Right? So this is what the configuration thing looks like. So if I wanted to um, verify that the auto sampler knew where to inject the sample, I click this button called Quick Move and then Injection A. Oh, well here we go. For some reason it wasn't happy doing that. Let's see if we can figure out why that is. I'm having to refresh the, the ports. Disconnected. Okay, now it says I'm connected. I'm not sure why that happened. So I'm going to go back to the configuration and I'm going to tell it to go to injection A. So here's the auto sampler now, and there's no syringe, and it's going into injection A. So it's a good thing that I did this, right? Because when I took the auto sampler off the GC and then put it back, it changed position ever so slightly, right? So I'm going to have to go through and, and make sure with the syringe out that this is pointing in the right direction because if, if it's not aligned properly, then it can, it can bend the needle of the syringe when it tries to inject, right? So it's a good thing I did this. I'm going to go back to the home position. And then I'm going to do that again and just make sure that it is misaligned because it's supposed to go in that little hole right there. All right, well, it, it did it correctly that time, so I'm going to do that one more time, just make sure that it knows where everything is. One more time, injection A is what it says. Okay, and so I'm not sure if the if the video camera will be able to catch this because it's kind of a fine detail but the, the syringe has to go into a very small hole just really big enough to align so it has to be pretty precisely aligned so you have to look at this before you put the syringe in and make sure that it is because if you do this test with the syringe in there it's just going to break a fifty dollar syringe so we're trying to avoid doing that by making sure it's properly aligned 
before we put the syringe in, because once we do, we're at risk of damaging it if it's not aligned, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to the home position. And then I'm gonna go to um, the Let's see what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go to bottle number one. Okay, and then I'm gonna look see that it looks like it's I'm looking at it from two different angles. I'm looking at it from the front to make sure it's lined up side to side. And then I'm looking at it from the side to make sure it's lined up front and back because I'm looking for that syringe to poke right through the, the hole in the middle of the little auto sampler vial. Okay, so everything looks good. So I'll take a risk now and put the syringe back in. So the, like we said earlier, it's it's hard to get the syringe in behind this protective shroud, so I'm going to tell it to go to the the injection port. Okay, and then I'm going to put the syringe in from this position, right? So I'm going to have to wiggle the, the needle around until you can find the, the hole. The hole isn't much bigger than the syringe needle, so sometimes it takes a while of to wiggle it. There it goes. I found it, right? So now I'm going to push the syringe down and then the plunger handle I'm going to put into this little um, box that slides up and down. Push that in there. And then the the bezel, or whatever they call this part of the syringe, um, goes into this little slot. And then we tighten this down. doesn't have to be very tight, just a little bit tight. And then this this arm here comes and secures the body of the syringe in place. Okay, so now we'll go back to the home position. And we'll test it, make sure. If we're, if we're wrong, we're going to ruin a needle. If we're right, then the needle will go all the way down in there. Okay, looks like we lucked out today. So, that's great. That's how everything is supposed to work. Okay, so now that we're we're confident that the um, auto sampler knows where the various vials and injection ports are, then we can proceed to the method button here on the software. So the method button lets you specify all the various parameters that you can use to control the auto sampler. You can control how much how much volume is injected by the syringe, you can control the speed with which it sucks the sample up, you can control the speed with which it dispenses the sample. You can really do a million different things and we don't really have time to explain each thing and most of the things that you would want to do you probably won't need to do. They're there as optional kind of features that you may or may not need but you probably won't need. The ones that you will need though are the the start vial right you have to tell it which vial to start with so right now it's set to start at vial number one and then you net you need to tell it the ending vial right well the ending vial could be any one of the 120 but the ending vial that i've chosen is also vial number one right i'm doing this because i'm just going to take a sample over and over from vial number one this is how we demonstrate the reproducibility of the GC and the auto sampler is we just repeatedly inject the same sample and then we get the answer and we calculate the standard deviation to determine the precision of the overall system. So that's kind of what I've got set up here. And I've told it to make 10 injections from the same sample bottle, right? Okay, so when I'm ready to go, I have to hit the, um, I have to control two things kind of at the same time. I have to control the Peak Simple software, and I have to control the auto sampler. So, the Peak Simple software has this um, menu button bar here that comes from hitting view and then relay pump window. View and then relay pump window, and that turns this little um, this little drop-down box, and I can control things from this little drop-down box. So, the auto sampler is looking for really two things. It's looking for this light on the GC to be um, to be lit. That's called the ready light, right? And the ready light turns on a minute after the oven 
has reached a stable temperature. The stable temperature right now is 51 degrees and as long as it doesn't deviate from that 51 degrees over the course of a minute then the ready light comes on saying okay everything's ready to go. So the auto sampler now is seeing that ready light because the, the signal from the ready light goes up to the auto sampler from the GC through this cable. So the GC, no, the auto sampler knows the GC is ready but it needs one more ingredient and that's this relay B, right? So we've, we've designed the system so that you can turn this, you can basically tell the system go, do your sequence by clicking this relay B and leaving it on. So I'm going to do that and watch what happens with the auto sampler. So I'm going to click relay B. Oops. Let's see, why didn't that do that? I guess because I made a mistake. I forgot to hit start. So that's good that you saw me make that mistake, right? So, so, so first I have to hit the start button. So the auto sampler says, okay, I'm ready to go. And then in Peak Simple, I click Relay B, and lo and behold, auto sampler goes and does its sequence, just like I told it. So right now it's gone to vial number one, and you may not be able to see the plunger going up and down in this little window, but it's, it's pumping the sample just as many times as I told it to, which was 10 times. I said, pump it 10 times so that get out um, any air bubbles and then take one microliter and go over to the injection port and squirt it in there and then go back to the home position. So, it's doing what I told it. Right now, notice that the start button here, now the light has gone out, right? That's because we told it to. We told it, we inhibited inhibited it from turning on again by clicking this um, relay relay H on the software. So that's important because if the light were to come on again the auto sampler would go and um, inject again and we don't want that until the analysis is complete. So what we do is we turn this relay H on via the software. We go to edit channels and then events for channel 1 and we put an event in very close to the beginning of the analysis. So in this case, it's 0 0.02 minutes. We turn Relay H on, and what Relay H does is prevent this light from coming on. And Relay H turns off at the end of the analysis. So at the end of the analysis now, the, um, the thing that's preventing the next cycle from beginning is when this light turns on, the next cycle will start. So we have to do one more thing in the Peak Simple software and that's we have to go to the edit overall screen and there's some check boxes here one of which says reset relays at end of run. So the, the software when it comes downloaded that checkbox is defaulted on right so what would happen is unless you uncheck that box these relays would turn off automatically at the end of the run. Now that wouldn't be a problem for Relay H, but for Relay B that would be a problem because then the next sequence wouldn't start. This is like the permission button, right? If that's off, then the auto sampler doesn't have permission to begin the next cycle. So let's wait for a second and see what happens. And then I think, unless there's any questions from the audience, that I missed anything. Can you talk about the driver? Oh yeah, that's right. We should talk about loading the driver. I talked about um, how it comes on a flash drive and that it's also available for download from our website, but the flash drive might be a more recent version of it. So when you, when you load the driver, it's just like loading any other Windows program. You, um, you go through the little installation program and then you get an icon on the desktop that looks like this. So um, I'll close I'll close this, we'll, we'll exit it, and then we'll minimize Peak Simple. So once you load, run the, the, the installation program, you get this icon. So you double click, and then this is what happens. There it is. So. There is a, a username and a password required 
and we've taped that on the front of the auto sampler. And I, I imagine you can change that. It says you can change the password. So, um, but anyway, the the password that it's delivered with is EST user. EST is the, is the username, and the password is EST user with a capital U. Okay. Well, look. While I was talking, the auto sampler went and did its thing again, which is great. Let's watch it and inject one more time, and then unless you can think of anything that we haven't talked about, then that'll conclude the video. And there it goes. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. So this is what the uh, AS120 looks like in the shipping container. So you can see it's, it's, you have to line the, the tower up and then it's a good idea to put some kind of a tie wrap around the, the syringe holder. So the, the auto sampler just kind of fits into the little, into the nicely molded little slots. And then on top of that, a couple of pieces of black foam. And then we have a couple of empty cardboard boxes. And that's it, right? Yes. That's all that goes in there. Okay. And then, let's see, I a little... And then there's another box that we have over there. Is there another box? Yeah, the box with the, the parts and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a, a box of parts that goes with it, too. So, yeah. three, three boxes. And then that closes. And then two tie wraps here, and that's how it ships.